So I hope you've had a chance to think about this problem that I left you, which is, can you show that the, the zero vector is a subspace of a vector space V? And here, the vector space V can be anything. And as we just saw before the break, there are three conditions that you need to check. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to check that the three conditions are true. So first of all, I have to check whether the zero vector uh, is inside of H, and that's actually clear because the only thing inside of H is the zero vector. So that part is definitely clear. The second part is I have to show that it's closed under the operation. Well, for any vectors u and v that I take inside of H, that means that u and v have to be the zero vector. And since zero plus zero is equal to zero, u plus v has to also be inside of h. And then the third condition is kind of proved in the same way. If u is in h and c is in r, then the vector u has to be the zero vector and c times u is equal to c times zero which is equal to the zero vector, which is inside of H. So every vector space V has at least one subspace, namely the subspace containing itself. But there's actually another subspace that belongs to any vector space V, and that is itself. So for any vector space V, V is a subspace of itself. So that means any vector space has at least two subspaces, the zero space and the whole space itself. And we want to actually give special names for these guys. So for any vector space V, the zero subspace and the whole space itself are called the trivial spaces, the subspaces are called the trivial subspaces. So normally in linear algebra, we're interested in subspaces that are a little bit more different than the trivial subspaces that sit somewhere between the zero and the V. Now to give you some more practice on subspaces, I have another question here. One is gonna uh, show you kind of how to check one of the conditions and then the other one will be more of a, a negative result. So the first statement here is let's take Q to be all the polynomials in degree two where the coefficient term is zero, okay? Now the claim is this is a subspace. I'm not gonna check all three conditions here. I'll just check condition two, just so you can get a feeling for how, how this works, all right? So we have that if PT and QT are in Q, PT has to look like zero plus A1T plus a two t squared. And similarly, q t has to look like zero plus b one t plus b two t squared. So when we add these two guys together, we get zero plus the co coefficient of t plus a t plus b t, which is the coefficient of t squared. And notice that here we, ha we still have uh, a zero constant term. And because q contains all the polynomials with zero constant term, we have, so p t plus q t also belongs to q. So we, the claim is that this is a subspace, and here we've only checked condition two of the subspace. If you want, you could try thinking about the other two conditions, but this is kind of how these types of proofs would be carried out. Okay, so this gives you an example of a subspace. Let me give you an example of something that is not a subspace. And again, like a, the example, non-example of a vector space, sometimes these are more illuminating. So here I have H containing all the, all the polynomials where each of the coefficients are integers, 
Okay, so we're not allowing fractions or transcendental numbers. So these numbers can only be 1, 2, or negative 1, negative 2. We're not allowing 3.5, for example. So what we want to do is explain why this is not a subspace. And so here is the solution. It's because it actually fails one of the three conditions for a subspace. And in particular, H is not closed under scalar multiplication. So when you're trying to disprove something, all you have to do is give one example of where it would fail. So for example, the polynomial 1 plus t plus t squared is inside of h. And 1 half is inside of r. But when you multiply these two things together, you end up with 1 half plus 1 half t plus 1 half t squared, which is not an element of h, because here is a polynomial where none of the coefficients are integers. So this fails to be a subspace. So there are a lot of kind of important things that uh, we've talked about in today's lecture. Probably one of the most important things and something that you'll see if you continue on in linear algebra and especially in some of your more advanced courses is the notion of a vector space. If you're getting stuck at the beginning, just think that a vector space generalizes the property of Rn. And what I also did is I gave you a bunch of examples of vector spaces. And keep in mind, the whole point is to develop a general framework that we can work in the more general setting, and then we can apply the results to special cases. We also talked about subspaces, and we, I gave the three things you need to check to see whether a set is a subspace or not. So again, let me reiterate, vector space is very important for linear algebra. Take a time to read the this, this section 4.1 of the textbook very carefully. Next time, we'll say a little bit more about vector spaces and subspaces and then talk about some spaces that come from matrices. So until then.